Hey, what's up guys? Fabio here once again and I want to welcome everybody back to another video. And today I am coming at you with another paid request. This time from Bruh It's Stipe who wanted me to review the Stone Cold Steve Austin movie Hunt to Kill. Which I thought cool. Um, because I have not seen this in quite a while. Um, I only ever seen it one other time. To be honest. Um... I had it. I had it on DVD at one point, and then I got this Blu-ray. I'm not sure where I got this Blu-ray. It had a, uh, it had a sticker, but this, it was just the price. It didn't say where it came from. I think I either got this at there was a, a video game store that's a little little bit of a drive from here, but it's worth going to. It was either there that I got it, or the farmers market that's near there where I got it. I can't remember. But I think it was one of those two places. But uh, I do like Hunt to Kill and I do like the other movie that's included in this two-pack, The Stranger. I think uh, they're among the better Stone Cold Steve Austin movies, which we'll get to in a minute. But yeah, I'm sorry. I went off on a tangent. You guys know how I am. Squirrel! Anyway. Um, but yes, he wanted me to review Hunt to Kill with Stone Cold Steve Austin, which I do like. Um, it's not the greatest movie ever made, um, you know, it's kind of like S Stone Cold doing his version of, of like, uh, like a cliffhanger type of movie, you know, not really like a diehard type of film, but that kind of environment where the bad guys are out in the woods and he knows all about the woods and he's trying to outsmart them and stuff, so... You know, it's a decent movie. It's a decent direct-to-DVD action film. I do, excuse me, I do dig uh, quite a bit of these Stone Cold Steve Austin movies. Mostly for him, because he has talent and charisma. Which is why, you know, he is among the greatest in wrestling. So that, I think, transitioned well into movies. But we'll get more into that in a second here. Um... But before we jump into this, as always, if any of you would like to help contribute to the channel by sending in a paid request such as this, you may do so down below in the description box. Um, no amount is too big. No amount is too small. Just, again, use your head. Don't send in uh, five cents. Like, make it worth your time and my time, just saying. Um, doesn't have to be just a movie review like this. It could be a TV series, cartoon, comic book, video game. Music, random thoughts, rant streams, commentaries, and anything in between. That's what the paid request is set up for. So again, if any of you are interested, go ahead, send it in, and I will get to it as soon as I possibly can. For those of you that have sent them in before, thank you. I greatly appreciate it. It means you guys actually care about what I say and do here on the channel. And you want to see me try some different things. It does motivate me to keep wanting to make videos. So it's a win-win for everybody. You guys get more of the type of videos that you want to see me cover here on the channel. I keep making them. And at the end of the day, everybody goes home happy. Just like they used to say at Blockbuster. So thank you. And I do apologize about getting this one and um, this video up a little bit later forgot to mention that when I did this one. Um, I was going to get this up on Monday night, but I just ran out of time. I had stuff to do Tuesday. I had personal things I had to take care of. By the time that you are watching this, it is Thursday. I am recording this on Wednesday. Um, it's just been, it's been a week. It's been, a, it, it's been a week. I'll just say that. Um, we'll leave it at that. But yeah, I do apologize about getting this up a little bit later. Because I did say, when I did the last Soda Pop video, I hate saying that. Fuck! It's soda. It's not pop. When I did the last Soda video, um, I did say I'll get another video up on Monday. It just didn't happen. I do apologize. But here we are. So, just please bear with me. Anyway, but Hunt to Kill. Like I said, I do like this movie. Um, I do, like I said, I remember when this came out. Because this came out right after The Expendables. Um... Because it was 2010. And I remember seeing like some of the marketing and stuff for it. And they really played off of the fact that 
Stone Cold Steve Austin, Gary Daniels, and Eric Roberts were all in The Expendables, and they were all in this movie. So they really uh, played up to that. And it even says on the back here, Steve Austin, The Expendables. Uh, Eric Roberts, The Expendables. Gary Daniels, The Expendables. So, you know, they really, again, played that up, that all three of these guys had just been in The Expendables, and then I think this came out right after that. So I do remember that. Like I said, I had the DVD at one point because I think when Blockbuster, the local Blockbuster here was closing, and of course they were trying to sell everything off to make money, They, uh, I think I got a bunch of these Stone Cold Steve Austin movies on DVD really cheap, and of course I upgraded. I think all of them I've upgraded to Blu-ray right now. And again, I love... Stone Cold Steve Austin. I, and I do like this movie and can't wait to talk about it. But we have to start with the man himself, in my opinion. I love Stone Cold Steve Austin. He was always one of my favorite wrestlers. The one thing I don't get is when they say, well, he made being the bad guy cool. I wouldn't really say that Stone Cold was a bad guy. I wouldn't say he was a heel. He was like an anti-hero. Because he was not the guy that played by the rules. He wasn't the the blonde hair, bubblegum chewing baby face that everybody wanted to hang out with. Even though he started as that because he was in the Hollywood Blondes with Brian Pillman um, when he had hair and he was blonde. So that is kind of funny how that worked out. But I would say he was more of an anti-hero. He was more of the guy that you worked with that you know did not give a shit about what was going to happen and he did his job well and he just was like fuck it whatever happens happens stone cold steve austin was that kind of guy and he was always one of my favorite wrestlers he was fun he was entertaining uh especially at the height of the attitude era you never knew what was he was going to do you never knew what was going to happen of course giving people beer baths and running over cars and all this is now legendary moments in wrestling that everybody remembers and he was one of the biggest stars of all time probably arguably the biggest star of all time and this is a guy that was told he was never going to make it in the wrestling business so there you go but i loved him as a wrestler and i do like his work as an actor i like these be direct to DVD movies that he did. I like The Stranger as well. Um, I think that the problem with his acting career it has nothing to do with him. I, again, I think he's talented. I think he can work in action films. I think he can work in that realm. But I think that the issue with his acting career, and I've talked about this before, is the fact that he got into the starring roles too late. Now, prior to The Condemned, which was the first movie he did where he was the lead, he was in, of course, The Longest Yard. He's great in that. He's a lot of fun in that as one of the bad guards. Um, he was on Nash Bridges a bunch of times, and they were considering giving him a spinoff because his character was so popular. He was on Celebrity Deathmatch anytime he popped in there. It was a lot of fun. So it was always, you know, he was always in movies and TV shows and he was popping in stuff. But I think that the problem was he got into being the leading man. He got into the starring roles too late. He retired effectively in 2003 from rec wrestling. I know he came back and did that match a couple years ago that nobody talks about because it really was nothing special, to be honest. Um... But when he retired in 2003, that's when he should have transitioned. Now, I think that The Rock, even though I'm not a fan of The Rock anymore as an actor, because every movie he does now is exactly the same. I mean, you could argue that for all the other action stars, but for The Rock, it's... I mean, I wouldn't say that with Schwarzenegger. I wouldn't say that with Stallone or Van Damme or Chuck Norris. Um... Seagal, I get where people say it, but I still like those classic movies. But The Rock is the same character. He's the same guy in every movie now. It's getting annoying. Um, and plus, he became a fucking woke tard, and, you know, I don't give a shit about that, so there you go. But The Rock did it right. He did, a, you know, some little things here and there, and then he jumped immediately into leading roles when the opportunity 
preceded itself when the opportunity showed up to where it was like, okay, well, do you want to keep getting in the ring and getting hurt and getting injured, or do you want to make movies and we'll pay you more money and it'll be safer? I think I'm going to go make movies. So The Rock, I will, I will say this, he was very smart by getting into films when he did, and then he would wrestle kind of part-time, and then he just stopped wrestling altogether. So, he did it correctly, in my opinion. And then, the problem with Stone Cold is they waited too long. He retired in 2003, and he didn't start doing movies full-time, starring roles, until 2007. So that's four years where he could have been making movies, and they probably ha would have had more that went to theaters, to be honest. Um, but Vince, of course, didn't want to let him go. So, that's why he let The Rock go, because it was like, okay, well, you know, what more could we really do with you as The Rock? So, you know, go ahead, go make movies, go have fun. Again, this is good. But for whatever reason, he didn't let Stone Cold go do that. He just, I don't know said, nope, you're going to stay here and we're going to make you the commissioner. And that was, I will admit, that was fun. I do like that era in like 2003, 2004 when Stone Cold was the commissioner or whatever and he would do stuff and him and Eric Bischoff would go at it. And it was all in good fun. You know, they uh, obviously in WCW, they didn't have a good relationship. But at that point, they shook hands and buried the hatchet and had had fun and went to work and had a good time. But I think that Vince should have let him go do movies because it would have worked out a little bit better, at least in my opinion. The Condemned is okay. I was never the biggest fan of it. I do like Stone Cold in the role because he was good in the role, but the movie itself is not that good. But I do like a lot of these. I do like a lot of these directed DVD movies that he did. Um, these two in particular I like. Uh, Recoil wasn't too bad. That was the last one that he did, and then he stopped. And the reason why he stopped is because he got hurt. Uh, I was listening to his podcast, and someone had brought up why he stopped making movies, and he said he got hurt when he did Recoil, so he wanted to just take time away and heal. And then I heard that the guy that he was working with, the producers that he was working with, the money dried up, so they couldn't make any more movies. But Damage, I like. That was kind of like his version of Lionheart. He did one called Knockout, where it was like the Karate Kid, but with boxing, and he played the coach. I did like that. Um, I liked him in the Seagal movie, Maximum Conviction. I'm sure he didn't like working with Seagal. He's never said... Like, that's one thing I do like about Stone Cold, like, if he didn't like someone, if he didn't like working with someone, he doesn't publicly talk about it. He leaves that privately. So I do enjoy that. It's always positive with him. He doesn't put, you know, and I'm sure he has opinions about a lot of people, but he's not one of those guys, well, fuck him, and he's a piece of shit, and he doesn't do that, which I do like about him. Um, you know, it's all positive with him, and I do enjoy I'm sure, again, he did not like working with Seagal, but I do like him in that movie. I have that on Blu-ray because of him in that performance. I do like him. The only, like, of the direct-to-video movies I didn't like was Chain of Command, the one that he did with Michael Jai White. He played a bad guy, but that movie was made for a dollar, and you can tell when you watch it, and it's just not a good movie at all. That movie was not good. The package was okay, the one he did with Dolph, but it's not something that I would ever watch again. I reviewed that here on the channel uh, a couple years ago when I did all the Dolph. What was that last year when I did all the Dolph stuff? So yeah, um, but that was that was okay. Again, that's not something I would ever watch again. But I do like this one, Hunt to Kill. So the plot of the film is. Stone Cold plays a Border Patrol agent. The movie opens up. Him and his partner, played by Eric Roberts, go into this meth lab. They get the jump on. They think they get the jump on the, the guys cooking the meth. The bad guys show up. Eric Roberts gets shot. 
and his character gets killed and the lab blows up. So we get a little teaser in there. Now I will admit, when I first saw this movie, I thought that Eric Roberts was going to end up being the bad guy. Like he was going to like fake his death or whatever. Like he set it all up, faked his death, and he was going to be the bad guy. That didn't happen. And I don't know why I thought, because I mean, I've seen enough of these movies I'm pretty sure if you guys are watching this, you've seen enough of these movies as well as me to know that in action movies, a lot of times you will have that. You will have where the guy's partner or the guy's friend or whatever or his captain or whatever dies and then shows up later in the movie and you find out he faked his death because he's with the bad guys. And you know. And I, I don't know why, but I just thought for some reason... That was going to happen in this film. I just thought that they were going to flip it and he was going to end up being the villain and it was going to be personal and all that. But it didn't. So there you go. So the movie picks up. Uh, Stone Cold's character has moved on elsewhere. He's still working for the Border Patrol. But he's elsewhere. And he's having issues with his daughter. His da daughter is your rebellious teenager. And they get caught up in this uh, situation where these the bad guys robbed these bearer bonds and the leader of the bad guys was betrayed them and was going to kill them but they stopped him so he can get away with the money himself so he ends up going out into the woods where Stone Cold's character lives and Stone Cold's character goes into the police station to get his daughter the bad guys are in there and they kill the sheriff and they force because Stone Cold starts to try to talk his way out of it to protect his daughter. They don't know that she is his daughter. And he basically talks his way into, like, if you don't hurt her, I will help you and I'll go help you find this guy in the woods because you're not going to be able to find him. So they start to do that. About halfway through, they find out that she is his daughter and they try to get rid of him. They do find the guy. They kill him and get the money and try to get away. But the last half of it is Stone Cold hunting these people down one by one to, you know, kill them, hence the title, um, and save his daughter. And that's the plot in a nutshell. And again, we've seen this movie before. Yes, it's very similar to Cliffhanger or even, like, I would say it would be very close to Snake Eater with Lorenzo Lamas, to be honest, which I do like. Um, but it's that kind of film. And again, we've seen this movie before. We've seen it better. We've seen it worse. And I think it's okay for what it is. I think it's decent. Um, it's well shot. The guy that directed the movie is Keone Waxman. I hope I said that right. Speaking of Seagal, he did some of the more decent direct a video Seagal movies. I think he did The Keeper, which was decent. I think he did Born to Raise Hell and A Dangerous Man, which those were the more decent Seagal movies, to be honest, in that, especially in that era. And that was the era when his movies were starting to get a little bit better. He, he looked like he lost some weight and, you know, it seemed like his movie now they still had the body doubles but they were getting better and then they just kind of when he started doing the goatee movies and they all just went to shit at least in my opinion with the fake ass goatee that he has anyway um but it is well directed there is a lot of bad cg i will say that especially in the beginning when the the meth lab blows up there is a lot of bad cg in it there's some at the end but there is also a decent amount of practical, especially in the the scenes when Stone Cold's like hunting people down, you know, and he's like killing people, and and a lot of that is practical, which is nice. So, you know, you do get a nice bit of that in the movie. I can't complain about that. The action scenes are nothing special, but they are decently, again, they're decently shot, they're decently choreographed. There's, you know, the little bit in the beginning when they're in this meth lab and again these movies are not the highest budgeted films as we all know but I think a lot of times they make it work again a director like Keone Waxman like I said he did some of the more decent Seagal movies he did some of the other movies with Stone Cold 
So he made it work for what they had to. So again, I like the little bit in the beginning with Eric Roberts. I do wish that Eric Roberts was in the movie more. But I know how he operates. He just likes to work. He'll just pick something. And I'm sure he did this to work with Stone Cold again. And, you know, probably working on the movie a couple days. Got a nice chunk of change and that was it. But I again, I don't know for, <laughs> for whatever reason. And it's probably because Eric Roberts has played that character a lot. Where he, you'll think he'll die in the movie. And then he comes back and you find out he's with the villain. So, I don't know why I thought that was going to happen in this movie. It would have been kind of interesting if it did happen, but it didn't. Um, the rest of the... While we're, while we're talking about the cast, Stone Cold does fine. He does get some good one-liners, like, well, when I hunt, I hunt to kill. And I thought that was kind of cool. Um, you know... When him and Gary Daniels fight, which I'll get to, he says like something about a stick, and then he like impales him on a stick. So, yeah, it's got what you would expect from these type of movies, one-liners and such. But I like it. I know now, it, all of a sudden, it's not cool anymore. All of a sudden, it's cheesy and corny and goofy and stupid and whatever the hell else these people say that doesn't make any sense. It doesn't matter because... Uh, you know, for years and years and years, nobody had a problem with Hasta La Vista Baby or I'll Be Back or Murdoch, I'm Coming to Get You. No one had problems with that. Now, all of a sudden, uh, because, you know, people are smarter than the movies, um, or so they think, it doesn't matter, but whatever. But I do like Stone Cold. Eric Roberts, again, for the little bit that he's in, does fine. Gary Daniels, I wish, I will, I'll, I'll complain about this. I wish that Gary Daniels was the lead villain because I don't think that the lead villain was that particularly strong. I don't think any of the other characters, any of the other villains were particularly that strong except Gary Daniels. Gary Daniels was like the quiet guy that should have been the leader in my opinion. He should have been the main villain. And when I first heard of this movie, that's what I thought was going to happen as well. But it didn't. Um... But Gary Daniels does fine. Him and Stone Cold have a pretty decent fight scene where they get to show some of their wrestling moves and, and martial arts moves, respectively. I do wish it was a, a little bit longer, but again, with these type of movies, we all know how it goes with the budgets and timing and stuff. But they definitely have the best action scene in the movie. They do have a decent fight. Um, but I just wish, and then when he gets killed, it's practical, it's, it's nice. But I wish that he was the villain. Like, Gary Daniels should have been the villain in this movie. Um, the rest of the villains just couldn't cut the mustard, really, in my opinion. They were just generic, and... Because there's, like, the annoying guy that they think they kill him, but he lives, and then he takes all the food for whatever reason, and then Stone Cold kills him, which I thought was kind of funny, the way that he did it, where he's, like, shooting him with these arrows, you know, slowly, like, slowly killing him, which I thought was cool. There's a guy that tries to take advantage of his daughter, so he beats the shit out of him, and then the bad guys kill him. Like, I wish they would have just let Stone Cold kill him. There's, of course, the stereotypical lady... Stone Cold, like, yells her name and, like, throws a spear into her. I thought that was kind of cool because it was practical. Um, the old guy that's supposed to be the mastermind, he was nothing special. And, and the way that he dies was kind of dumb because he, like, gets into a fight with a guy and he gets injured. And he's, like, laying up against a tree and they just shoot him and get the money. And I'm like, okay, whatever. And then the lead villain was more annoying than anything else, to be honest. I will say that the villains were pretty weak, except Gary Daniels. Again, Gary Daniels should have been the lead villain in this movie. Um, but they have the gimmick where the bad guy, like, st you think that he dies, you think that Stone Cold kills him. But again, there is some decent stuff there. They get into a fight in this, like, sawmill and like they're it's all practical like they're practically fighting and then you have stuntmen jumping off of like the second floor onto the like this wood pile and it's all done practically i can't complain about that and then finally 
he drives a four-wheeler into him, and then he shoots a flare, and then it blows up, and that's mostly practical. It's mostly a practical explosion, so I can't complain. Um, the rest of it, yeah, like, there's stunt doubles, like, climbing up the mountain and st stuff. So there is a lot of practical effects in this movie for a movie that came out in 2010. You know, I'm pretty impressed by that. I can't complain. And it's also funny because... Like I said earlier, this came out right after The Expendables, and one of the biggest complaints that I have with The Expendables is there's a lot of CG in it that didn't need to be in there, because it was trying to be this old-school action movie. So, they could have did that a little bit better, but again, with these lower-budgeted films, you have to make it work for what you have to work with. And I think that they did that well. I'm trying to think, is there anything I missed? Oh, the daughter, the girl that played the daughter, I thought was just annoying. Because they're trying to make her like this tough girl, and the actress just didn't really have it, in my opinion. She just couldn't pull it off. I mean, she's a cute girl, but she just like tried to be like this tough chick, and it just wasn't there. It just didn't happen, in my opinion, but oh well. But at the end of the day, you know, I do like this for, mostly for Stone Cold Steve Austin. I think it is competently directed. Again, this director did some of the more decent Seagal movies, and I think he worked with Stone Cold again. Let me pull this up here. Let me see if I can, uh... No, not Kempo. Uh, we're not doing Kempo right now. You know, it would help if I spell the guy's name right. There we go. Um, well, he did Sweepers with Dolph Lundgren, but I know that Dolph said that he was disappointed because he said that the director didn't really know what he was doing and, and wasn't up to the job. But I do like Sweepers with Dolph. I have that on Blu-ray. Yeah, he did The Keeper. He did A Dangerous Man which are two of the more decent uh, Seagal movies, to be honest. He did not do um, Born to Raise, how I thought he did. Uh, but he did work with Stone Cold again on Maximum Conviction, which I like him in that. He did the True Justice series with Seagal, which was eh. Force of Execution, A Good Man, Absolution, Contract to Kill, End of a Gun, and Cartels. All forgettable Steven Seagal movies, to be perfectly honest. The only one out of that was the beginning. The opening scene of A Good Man was kind of decent, but those are all forgettable movies. But The Keeper, I think, is one of the more decent ones, and A Dangerous Man, I thought, didn't, wasn't that bad either. But So it is completely directed. There are some really good practical effects in the movie. At least you get Eric Roberts, at least you get Gary Daniels, but I do wish that he was the lead villain, or like I said earlier, there's a twist, and then you find out that these people really work for Eric Roberts, and they were going to go up there to meet him, and then you throw Eric Roberts back into the mix. That would have been more interesting, but it just wasn't in the cards. But Stone Cold does fine. Again, I think this is a decent movie for what it is. Um, you know, I like, I dig a lot of these little directed video movies that he was in so I can't complain that much but there you go but anyway I hope that you guys enjoyed my review of Hunt to Kill and uh, we will see you on the next one later